Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Wayne from Nubius. How's it going, Wayne? Hey Tom, great to be with you and uh, really looking forward to uh, our chat today. Yeah, we've got a, a great session actually. We're going to be talking about uh, hybrid meeting rooms and how partners can really add value to meeting room technology. And I think you're in a great position to talk about this because you sit between the vendors and the, and the channel partners. So perhaps to start off with, maybe a little bit of a broader question. Could you talk through some of the, the biggest challenges partners are facing today when it comes to delivering hybrid meeting tech? Yeah, so uh, uh, this is a <coughs> huge, uh, huge topic, Tom. So let me uh, not go on for too long. So I think the big thing that's affecting a lot of us uh, at, at the moment is aggressive price points. Um, I think a lot of the, um, a lot of especially hardware, there's lots of competition uh, coming in, lots of commoditization, or and and that comes with standards, right? So <clears throat> that's a real pressure. I think it's it's making. Uh, I guess traditional ways of uh, delivering business through using hardware margin more difficult for many partners. But if I look on the brighter side of things, I think the <clears throat> to deliver hybrid uh, hybrid meetings properly requires a lot more of a, a wider solution set. It requires a lot more expertise. So I think for those partners that <clears throat> use their expertise and widen the capabilities and portfolio, I think there's a, a, a great opportunity there because there's a lot to get wrong in this. Yeah, and I think, you know, where you're getting com uh, competition from people who may be just uh, providing screens and video bars, um, you know, that's all well and good, but there's a lot more to it than that. And if I give a, a few examples, um, you know, we've got to get the audio correct. And a lot of it takes a lot of expertise to get the audio correct. And in fact, in any meeting, if the audio doesn't work properly, it doesn't matter how good the facilities, the collaboration or anything else, the meeting just doesn't work. And I think that comes on to things like also monitoring and making sure the quality of the meeting, not only of the meeting, but the facilities are all available at the start of the meeting. You know, I read recently, and I don't know this stat, is true or not but the average meeting takes 12 minutes to start yeah wow. you can imagine that's with people wrestling where's the hdmi cable who's joining all of that kind of stuff that really drags down the quality of the meeting so being able to monitor and make sure everything is operational and ready before the meeting starts kind of makes a big difference and that's a great skill and value add for partners to be able to uh, to, uh, to be able to add and I think the other things as well is understanding uh, equity, meeting equity. And I think there's, um, there's a lot in, in meeting equity where we've got to understand that people aren't equal in a meeting, right? If you're in a meeting, that's very different from somebody who may be on the road, maybe somebody who's working from home, maybe in a remote, uh, remote office. <laughs> we've got to understand that. And there's lots of different technologies now coming in where we're using multiple cameras, focusing on the person that's speaking and that does require again education for making sure that people understand how this technology can help but that comes back to that expertise uh, needed for needed from the partner and i'm going to list a couple of other things here as we as we go through so connectivity is another thing we need to be able to assume that people aren't always sat there with a video a screen large screens, great audio. So the connectivity comes into it that people may be on the road. So we need to have the right devices. We need to be able to uh, have the right integration so that could, people could call from a hotel. They may be on their mobile phone, often in their car. In fact, that's all part of, uh, of making sure that you can join meetings from anywhere. And I think other areas of um, where partners can really add value is in collaboration as well. It's not just about share, uh, sharing a screen. Of course, we need to make that easy as well. That's one of the things that, again, I'm sure meetings you've been in where someone's looking, how do I connect? How do I share my content? All of that is part of that skill that people need to bring and, and make it easier for the, uh, for the user. But it's also about collaboration and being able to bring in uh, collaboration mm -hmm. platforms applications being able to edit and work on things together that's uh, that's going to be important that could be bringing in 
meeting boards. I mean, how many times have you seen people with a, a flip chart dragging <laughs> it into a meeting and trying and say, can you see this? You know, I mean, the, these are sort of comical things, but they're the realities that we see very often. I see them when I go into uh, go into meetings. So how do we bring use collaboration boards to make sure that we're absolutely able to do um, collaborate live and, and use all of our creativity rather than the people in the room having an advantage of, 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 of the other ones. And then other areas uh, are things like resource management, making sure all the resources are available um, for people to book, know they're available, know it's all, all connected correctly. And then the last part I'd mention, and I could go on for days about this, is then is interoperability. How can we still make sure that if somebody's chosen a platform, how can we make sure that it doesn't matter to the user? We can just do a mouse click or an, a, a, a meeting room display click and connect and not worry if somebody's using a different ecosystem or a different platform. So without me going too much for your short question there, Tom, that's a challenge, but that those challenges there are an enormous opportunity for partners to be able to deliver their skills and quite a lot of high margin solution beyond screens and, and, and video bars. It's that mixture that I think partners who really embrace that can bring so much value to uh, to, to uh, the productivity of a, a customer. Yes, there really is a lot to think about and it's a space that's always changing. And I just wonder if there's anything, you know, from your experience that you think partners should be doing more of or less of just to, to be a bit more successful in this area. <clears throat> yeah, so I think, you know, I think it is about bringing the wider solution and the wider eco uh, the wider ecosystem if you look at what i think our role is as technology players it's to listen to the business objectives of a uh, of a of, of a customer and then use our expertise to advise them on how they can make the their employees more productive or more collaborative and that's inside and outside the organization and to do that i think vendors and needing partners to have that ecosystem to work with the uh, work within the realms of the other technologies and alliances and interoperability solutions they have to take them as part of a full solution and not as a single point solution um, to, uh, to 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 maybe just answer a query for product rather than a query for the expertise to deliver a full solution. And then I think it's quite interesting beyond the technology, you know, the hardware, the software itself, what do you think partners can do to add additional value to the customer and particularly help them through some of the more complex hybrid environments? Yeah, I, that's a good question, Tom. I think the main core of this is about integration and about integrating all of their communications together so that the hybrid meetings are, are able to bring different elements of communications together. And I think that's a challenging part for partners because some of this integration requires a lot of uh, very specific skills. And if you think about some of the things we have to integrate with, if you think about if we're integrating with Zoom and, and Teams and other platforms, we're talking about integrating with IT systems over networks, <clears throat> where in bringing telephony in into that we want to be able to bring things like uh, call recording reporting monitoring so there's a lot of integration um, uh, <clears throat> skills that are needed now again I'll come back to the positive of that that is where the, the partners can start to bring more and more build on their skills use partnerships um, use your distribution partners. We uh, we work in a lot of uh, a lot of projects where we are bringing additional skills to complement the partner to allow them to do these complex uh, integrations and migrations as well. Great, and I think it would be nice to uh, to look forward in our, our last couple of questions, Wayne. So I just wondered if you give us any clues about what kind of technology Nuvius, as a leader in the space, is looking to to bring into the portfolio over the coming months. Yeah, so uh, um, as you can probably guess, I've mentioned quite a few few of those things. So 
you know, monitoring is, is going to be really key for us. So we're going to be bringing some more monitoring solutions to make sure for our partners, those meeting rooms are up, functional, ready, and therefore our partners can uh, provide services so that they're actually informing the customer when there's a problem and fixing it before the meeting happens. So that I think that's a real exciting uh, area. Um, also with resource management, uh, that's an area we, we think is now a crucial part of any uh, meeting is to make sure all the resources are allocated and everybody knows who's got the uh, who's got the rooms uh, uh, booked is that facility uh, available but then other areas that are perhaps uh, definitely around collaboration um, is going to be something we think is important and again I think moving from things that are just about sharing content to about true interactive collaboration so that's uh, that's important for us and then I think the other things that um, we're really looking at and excited about which perhaps aren't don't sound as exciting but are, re are really core cool, which is compliance and making sure that we're able to bring compliance into that now whether that's call recording but it's also call analytics so you can start to understand the content and make sure especially between organizations is to understand is there anything that's gone on that's not compliance do we have access to recording can we use AI to actually spot any potential uh, any potential um, compliance concerns if I can put it that uh, put it that way so yeah there's a lot of stuff and then I um, and then integration I've mentioned that that's important so we're going to be doing more of the integration um, technologies we already do but looking at some other technologies that complement and give us more opportunity to integrate and make sure that we bring this unified and converged communications um, and this one click to join the uh, kind of technology. Great. And my final question for you, Wayne, I think we probably covered this, but it'd be nice to bring it all together. Um, what emerging trends do you think channel partners need to be really aware of over the coming months and this year when it comes to hybrid meeting spaces? I think it's going to be much more about convergence and about being able to bring in more technologies, integrate it in, into those technologies, um, allow more people in different scenarios to join on different types of equipment, uh, different uh, and different platforms. Um, and I guess no, uh, as I say a lot these days, no, no conversation is going to be com uh, complete without mentioning the word AI. Um, and I'm going to get away from that buzzword of AI. I think AI in our industry is real. Um, and we should really bring this for the forefront of when we're talking to customers. If you look at some of the things that AI can deliver today, I've already just mentioned some by, by compliance, right? With the actually being able to do monitoring and, and watch compliance. But there's also, <clears throat> excuse me, there's also much more practical things, which is um, bringing an AI companion inside the meeting and inside the meeting to take minutes and provide uh, and provide summaries and that is an amazing add-on and of course give uh, give summaries to people who weren't at the meeting um, uh, or people that were, were just uh, understanding what had gone on in the meeting so I think AI there's lots of exciting things coming from AI but there's really practical things that partners can deliver and real customer benefits today that AI uh, delivers in our industry and I think that's quite unique because a lot of what we see of AI when we hear about it in the media, it's all about wonderful futures, and and that's great, that's that's true, but in in our industry, AI delivers today, and I think that's something partners should get really confident and uh, and take it to their customers. And you know, as uh, Nubis UC, we're more than happy to uh, help our partners in uh, in navigating and and taking advantage of that. Great. I think that's a nice place to leave it. We've finished on a really big trend and I'm not sure any of us really know exactly where AI is going to take us and wherever it does, it's probably going to get there quicker than we expected. But um, Wade, it's been fantastic talking to you. I appreciate you giving us your insights today. Yeah, great to talk to you as always, Tom. Thanks a lot. And thank you everyone for watching. Remember, you can follow the full UC Partner Trends series via the UC Partner Trends hashtag and on uctoday.com. That's all from me. Thanks for watching.